welcome to another section of vulnerability assessment which we know will be finalizing the vulnerability assessment so different method instruments dimension app are apparent in the uh, we've discussed in previous section as well these are apparent so how do we uh, identify the factors or components or capacities and sensitivities these kind of uh, components of vulnerability these can be measured so we can find we can measure it you we, we talked about some indicators as well in the previous sections that those indicators can be measured in which can we can quantify values of vulnerabilities and we can identify which households are most vulnerable which are let's say a moderate vulnerable and which are low vulnerable so if we can find out the population which is at high risk high exposure level high sensitivity level or low capacities we can find out which households are most vulnerable and which households can be targeted in, in case of a disaster occurrence so vulnerabilities can help us in basically identifying comparing different regions and effectiveness as well of risk measures as well so vulnerability is can directly pinpoint to the factors which we can uh, work on to develop disaster risk reduction measures but for that we must be very much clear about which indicators we are going to be using it those indicator must be very much transparent robust and they must represent direct proportional to your vulnerability that can be easily comparable replicable and easy to understand so vulnerability is a very important so we are going to be assessing it so vulnerability assessment has like uh, we talked about it as a part of global environmental change it has now also become a part of the sustainability science in which sustainable development is also using the term of vulnerability as well to describe the level of sustainability in india uh, it is observed as a widely uh, concept in global environmental change which includes disaster management and this climate change adaptation it is one of the most crucial step towards resolving or reducing the consequences of natural hazards and risks now as a planner uh, we can make use of different databases available in the areas in which we can have a detailed investigation and identify the percentage of vulnerable people in our area so in, for that we can we need specific hazard related indicators to assess different vulnerabilities and comparative vulnerabilities which can be assessed and that would result in identifying identification of these vulnerable groups uh, as of yet no clear cut and standardized methodology is existing to measure the multi dimensional aspects of vulnerability so depending upon which section uh, let's say dimension sector and uh, approach you are going to be using for a vulnerability that depends upon the your area and which type of hazards are already existing in that area so that is very much which needs to be understood before undertaking any kind of vulnerability assessment so an index has been observed as one of a very comprehensive tool or accepted standard scientific tool or a method which has been used to measure the dynamic characteristics of vulnerabilities and multi we call it, i call it multi faceted aspect of vulnerability so an index can summarize and add those a composite index into form of a very well established vulnerability index so before going to be measuring an index we must be uh, uh, really clear about which sort of framework we are going to be using for vulnerability assessment we must hazard relevant or hazard specific indicators we need to be chosen and then can be standardized for having a comparative analysis we might be allocating some kind of weighting technique or aggregating those indicators to measure disaster and then maybe even we can have a some kind of robust uh, reliability analysis in which we can find out if the ind indicators are uh, enough to measure vulnerability so that again depends upon how much comprehensive or detailed kind of statistical analysis we are going to be using it to identify the factors which are contributing to the to, towards vulnerability so in the end uh, 
we must be sure about finalizing uh, the framework that the final framework should be used should be simple yet complex enough to capture the reality so we don't have to be let's uh, let's see uh, for example in an area which is very much poor you should not be excluding an indicator of poverty so the indicators must be representing the real reality of the area so those factors might be factor location sector group and we must be acknowledge uh, we must acknowledge that vulnerability is dynamic so whatever sort of vulnerability assessment you're going to be doing today will not hold true for the next maybe next year next five years ten years so it is very dynamic in nature and vulnerabilities and uh, poverty are often very much interrelated and they are like kind of sometimes uh, synonymous uh, like uh, interchangeably used to assess uh, well, uh, vulnerability testing. Uh, so another aspect of vulnerability assessment is because it is a very vital, uh, it is a very varying or dynamic concept. Uh, it will be it will be varying according to the time and space, uh, spatial and temporal. We uh, use it call it spatial temporal dynamics of vulnerability is so much that uh, it significantly influences your disaster risk assessment. So uh, when we'll be we'll be revisiting the risk assessment, so we'll be retouching this concept of vulnerability report. And uh, uh, vulnerability must include social vulnerabilities also there, but we should not forget that it is very much varying according to space. So, so space as well as the social vulnerability that will vary for vary according to time. And generally, J is also used to identify to overlay the hazard values. And when we overlay it with the vulnerability values, we can some kind of find out different risk assessment as well. So this is a for uh, this uh, information of vulnerability can be as can help us in basically designing some kind of awareness techniques and mitigation measures, some evacuation plans that will ultimately result in a better disaster reduction against a particular natural hazard. So uh, in conclusion that like how we're going to be uh, expressing vulnerability so there are different techniques we call it indexes tables or curves are present in the scientific literature which we which shows you the aspect of vulnerability. So in uh, firstly there are different methods available in which you can find out vulnerability how are we going to be understanding the or uh, explaining under, uh, yes, understanding and explaining the concept of vulnerability through exposure capacity and sensitivity and how these components of disaster uh, this vulnerability system how different components of disaster vulnerability can be mathematically expressed to understand the concept of vulnerability. So depending on the formula you're going to be using, your vulnerability values might vary. And in this, the last formula, V is equal to the V's formula, exposure into sensitivity into capacity, the multiplication is basically lack of capacity. So it is exposure into sensitivity multiplied by lack of capacity. So capacity is basically your counteracting part of your so sometimes uh, engineering students mostly use the fragility curves in which in a particular building you can find out that at what level the building is vulnerable. So vulnerability curves are also used, also, people also call it fragility curves that provides the probability of element risk that it will, after a certain uh, stage, it will result in a damage. So that is fragility curves. So like for example, uh, at what instance will a building collapse? So different type of structures would have different uh, reaction or response to a disaster. So curves are there. Look, so people also make it indexes like they give it weightages, weights depending upon each uh, categories or physical characteristics we can 
give pairs and we can find out some kind of uh, quantitative value in which we'll be finding out that how much a polar particle building is so we can work it out then also we can uh, based on different dimension we can also observe vulnerability as a component of social economic and physical vulnerability so these are also representation of another aspect of index of vulnerability so in these using these methods we can understand or express vulnerability another is like uh, we talked about some qualitative aspect as well so we can also make some tables in which we can rate a building one two three four five so you can also do this kind of study for vulnerability assessment as well. so that's all thank you class